Network. Hey, it's, I don't know, end of the week. Wednesday the 21st and Thursday the 22nd. Regular kids, we're going to deal with throwing kids out windows today. Things as we learn more about the outsiders. Uh, let's see. Uh, schedule tomorrow, you go to I Learn first thing in the morning. Uh, again, I know I'm just as excited as you are. Uh, and then hopefully during best tomorrow, you can take time to complain about how awful your I Learn teacher is. Because apparently that's what all of my classes wanted to do, is they've all been comparing how bad their I Learn teacher is compared to everyone else's I Learn teacher is. And here's a secret for you. All of your I Learn teachers are teachers. So bad. So uh, whatever comparisons you're trying to do, all the teachers are bad because they're all teachers. Because I have, I do, and I'm awful too because I'm a teacher. So it's how we recognize it. No, yeah. not your I learned teacher is not your best teacher at all. In my case, it is. Well, you got lucky. Go you. Way to flex on kids. So again, you're gonna have the I learn class, and then you, tomorrow you go period three, then best, and the class periods are shorter except for the fifth period one tomorrow. And then next week you get math. I guess I should probably put it on there. Next week you get math, the same thing again, normal on Monday, Tuesday, and then math on Wednesday, Thursday, and then it'll be the same thing. Then you're done after all of those fun things, unless. You're one of the online kids. Then you get to come in on Friday for your learning. Uh, and you have like eight hours of learning. So I think they're going to do English and math all together. I don't know. They're going to do it until like you break down crying. Speaking of breaking down crying, Owen? Can I attack a kid that isn't in this class? But now you turn to Probably not. Well, the reason being is like, even though they're stars and yeah, you guys all want them to lose points. These are horrible humans. But no, I mean, all right. Are you not saying the kid's name? No, thank you. Well, then no, you can't just, I appreciate, one, I appreciate your honesty. Two, I appreciate how excited you got about attacking that kid. But no, we're going to try and not do the attacking of other humans. Okay, so there is this one kid, right? Unnamed child, okay. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know who you're He does the same thing in my class. I just let him go. Uh, <laughs> not you. He's the one who lost 11 points. <laughs> so, I mean, the part where we literally just got done not saying a name. And then you loudly said the name. So listen, this is how learning works. For some kids, it's painful. He pointed at me, though. He was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Right. Did you say the name out loud? No. Oh. <laughs> learning. Yes, sir. Hang on one second. Max, did you want to say that kid's name, too? Okay. <laughs> Continue, man. So apparently it's not just I learn teachers that have issues, it is I learn students that have issues. Yeah, yeah my guess is it's just I learn in general. Oh, and then also when our teacher said we could go to the bathroom, all the clothes were ready to the bathroom, but then we get access to the bathroom. We get out of the class. Right. Is that, is that shocking on any level? That's, no. I appreciate you letting me in on that deep, deep secret. Uh, by the way, if you lose 12 points, don't forget, I then have to move you over next to me in this. Not that anyone in this class is anywhere close to losing 12 points. I'm just making sure that we're aware of such a thing were to happen, then we'd have to get you involved. Over Max. Right. And then other kids. It's a race to see which kids can lose points. That's right. Yeah. If you have not picked up on it yet, you're not there yet. You're just you're, you're you're trying to race Max. Yeah. The loudly saying the kid who's making the poor choices gets you in trouble also because my goal is not to throw a kid under the bus because all y'all make poor choices at some point. Y'all pointing fingers at others like you're a whole bunch of people living in little glass houses. Yeah. So anyway, as we continue on, hi, home children. I'm sure this is an entertaining day of today's version of which kids can get in trouble first. Uh, and the answer is all of them. Uh, and so there. 
All right. Hey, it's working. Uh, let's see, blue sheets. I still have kids who don't have all their blue sheets turned in. In this class, it's just the virtual kids who are not turning them in. All the kids who are here being tortured are good. My other class, I have kids who are still standing, even though that was like an entire unit ago. But, you know, they just like being tortured. Not saying the names out loud. Yes, dear. Uh, what time do we leave? Here at the end of the day. Oh. Good enough. And then see from there. It's almost 25. Shh, now, Dagger, he's still going. For this one, uh, one, it's getting impressive. I mean, the, the, com the competition that is going all through there. So, yes, we are now in second to last place with 11 seconds. But realize also the 11 seconds and second to last place, we didn't think anyone could beat 12 seconds. If you remember two weeks ago when a kid made 12 seconds, you're like, that's impossible, full of lies. And now all of a sudden, 12 seconds is now our slowest one. Also realize y'all are faster than any kids I've ever had. In the past, my fastest times were in like the 18 to 16 second range. So all of you beat every human that has come before you up to this point. So, and many of you have beaten me because the fastest I got down to was like the 10 to 11 second range. So go all of you on that one again. For those of you who are wanting to go, you'll have to wait till next week just because of our weird short period today. We have the time to get into it. But if you are still wanting to compete, you can. Those of you who have not beat 30 seconds yet, you can still go to beat 30 seconds and just try to get your candy and B points. Those of you who have already gone twice, you still have to beat that time, which would be 11 seconds. Once we are done and no one can beat the times anymore, then I bring in presents for all the kids who are on the official wall. And so I'm going to bring in like a special thing for each of those six kids. But apparently we're still trying to compete and beat each other. So we're not there quite yet. Blaze. Can you send me a picture of that? Of the, of the, um, <laughs> this, yeah, that. that thing yes it's you already have it written down in your notes oh. remember we took that down as notes I threw it away. Well, that was <laughs> <laughs> or you can do this thing called watching the video i'm recording right now and then pausing the screen oh. Yippee -dee -dee. zachary can i buy a piece of candy or is yeah at the end of class not right now I'm trying to do a teaching thing. All right, so outsiders, let's get into outsiders thing. So I sent remindery thing this morning as far as your checkpoint. We are going to start chapter seven today, uh, but I want to talk about chapter six because it has my favorite character in it and my favorite scene in the entire book. And I have to talk about those because it brings me joy and happiness. Your next checkpoint is going to be the end of chapter eight, which is like page 130. Drawback is we're not going to get a chance to read all of that together. Uh, one, because you guys are a little spastastic today because you had I learned. Nothing against you. I completely feel you, which is why I let you guys have your spazzy time for the first 10 minutes because I figured, one, you were in I learn all morning. Two, many of you guys had to be in math and science after that. We had to just stare at the wall and cry. So I figured 10 minutes of spazzy time was the least I could give to you. The drawback is that does eat into my reading time, but we'll get there. Let's see. Blah, blah. Greaser, Socia, stabbing a kid, pop bottle, who hasn't, uh, neighborhood want. Uh, from there, the drive-in movie theater at the Hot Girls, and then the Mustang, which is Bob, who gets killed, and then Blue Mustang, Bob, who gets killed, and then we get to the empty lot, and then chapter four. Oh, yeah, chapter four is where Bob gets killed. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sitting on a theme. Uh, the fountain in the park, we do the drowny, drowny thing, and Blue Jeans Jacket, which is the one that I think... Johnny, where Johnny wears a blue jeans jacket. Chapter five. Where do they go in chapter five? The church. That's the church. And they go there and they hang out and they read Gone with the Wind, which is about the Civil War from a long time. Ooh, hydrogen peroxide. What does hydrogen peroxide do to your hair? And by the way, for those of you who want to change your hair and surprise your parents, you can go ahead and put it. It works. Put it in your hair. I would say go outside and sit in the sun. But you may have realized it turned December last night. So you can go outside and it's not going to sit in the sun. It's going to freeze to your head. And you're going to come in with like an ice helmet. Uh, and that's going to change your hair color a whole different way. Uh, ooh, not everyone. Oh, sorry. Which one character changes their hair? Why does Johnny not change his hair? Because he has, he says like Hispanic or some guy, he has darker skin, so he can't change. He could, but you're not going to blend in with dark skin and lighter hair. Not saying it looks bad, 
but you're not going to look like everyone else and blend in. So that's why he does not do his hair. Although they do use the knife to cut their hair. And when was the last time they used the knife? Just making sure we're on the same page. And then they're there. And then we get to the church. Oh, we got to the sunrise and this thing. Sunrise poem. When they were going through and doing that talky thing. So with the poem that pops up and they go through and talk about it from there. The whole poem is everything you love in life dies. Everything you enjoy in life goes away. All the good things in the world are going to be destroyed. The good news is enjoy it while you have it. If there's a game you have, play it while it's still around. If you have a teacher you like, be spazzy while you're around them. If you have a friend you hang out with, whatever it is, enjoy them while they're around. They're going to talk about that line lots in the book coming up. The idea that nothing gold could stay or finding what your gold is. For me, my goal is torturing students and watching them cry. For you, your goal may be getting the win in the Call of Duty. It may be, I don't know, playing a musical instrument. It may be, I don't know, TikTok for like nine-tenths of you. Whatever it is that your goal is, find that thing that brings you happiness and embrace and cherish it. Because a lot of people don't know what their happiness is or what their goal is. And that's what they're referring to. Owen. I thought it was going to Dairy Queen for lunch sometimes. But, yeah, right. I mean, that's some serious gold. Uh, then uh, who who shows up while they're at the church? Dally. And that's when Dally shows up. And he's like, hey, I'm here to get you guys out of here. And he shows up in Buck's Thunderbird. And then they take, ooh. Where do they go eat after Dally picks them up? Just because making the connection. They go to eat at Dairy Queen also, although they eat a whole bunch of barbecue sandwiches in their head. Yeah. I think they had barbecue sandwiches until they got the sick. Um, and a banana. I mean, who doesn't? And then the banana split, which is, ooh. And then Dally talked about the fact that he has a heater with him. And what's the heater? A gun. But Dally says, I'm not an idiot. And so what does he do with his gun to prove he's not? So he has no bullets in it so that he can still wave it around and be like, I'm going to go pew pew. But there's no actual pew pew in it. It is just him holding a gun. And you're like, he's a genius until later on we find out not a genius uh, because apparently just because there's no bullets in it doesn't save you. And then I'm going to start giving you new screen I created. So it doesn't just have their names. I tried giving you little descriptiony things to try and make things easier. So I thought this might make like quiz and stuff like that easier on you to get this kind of thing. So that was my next thing to help you out. Then we got to chapter six. Uh, they went to Dairy Queen. Ooh, while at Dairy Queen. Uh, Johnny makes a decision of this big thing he is going to do. Turn himself in. Turn himself in. He's like, all right, because of this, no more being on the run. I am going to turn myself in because I don't want Pony Boy to have to run from the cops anymore and be away from his brothers. And then he and Dally yell at each other for a little bit. And they're like, no, I'm going to do it anyway. So he decides to turn himself in. And then they head back to the church to turn themselves in. And there's a surprise at the church. The surprise being? Fire. Much like the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The church was on fire. There's foreshadowing when they were there. And at one point, Pony Boy was like, I have to be careful with my cigarettes because I could set this church on fire. And the next scene, the church is on fire. Most likely because they set it on fire. So that's where they come back to. Ooh, and to make it even better, not only is the church on fire, there's guests there, which are a whole bunch of children, which brings me my favorite character so let me read you my favorite character in the whole book which is on page 91 Think of it. it's a guy by the name of jerry you knew jerry me too jerry is the teacher of all the little kids that's there so let me explain i'm gonna read the scene with him and then explain to you why jerry is my favorite person this is on page 91 um, this is where uh they're talking to jerry and he's like hey we're having a school picnic uh, and all the kids are there and I says, I bet we started it. I said to Johnny, we must have dropped a lighted cigarette or something. About that time, a lady came running up. Jerry, some of the kids are missing. Ah, they're probably around here somewhere. I can't tell with all this excitement where they might be. No, she shook her head. They've been missing for at least a half an hour. I thought they were climbing the hill. Then we all froze. Faintly, just faintly, you could hear someone yelling. And it sounded like it was coming from inside the church. The woman went white. I told him not to play in the church. I told him. She looked like she was going to start screaming. So Jerry shook her. I'll get him. Don't worry. I started at a dead run for the church. And the man caught my arm. 
I'll get him. You kids stay out. I jerked loose and ran. All I could think was, we started it. We started it. We started it. All right, quick pause. Jerry's my favorite person. Here's my reasoning why Jerry's my favorite. He's a teacher. Takes a bunch of children to an abandoned church. Already a great start. Because what old man doesn't want to take small children to an abandoned building? Already a great start to a story. Then old building catches on fire and they're missing kids. How does Jerry react to missing kids? Exit. Yeah. They go like, we're missing kids. He's like, we got the good ones. And so I'm like, no, there's missing children and Jerry don't care. Then a woman gets upset. She's like, but we're missing them. His reaction is to shake her. I'm like, settle down. They're just children. We got backups. And then like, he throws her to the side. I'm like, that's teaching. So obviously I've been doing it wrong. And so that is my favorite character in the whole book. But it gets better because my favorite scene is coming up. Next. We'll find out. We set the place on fire. There's one standing next to you, the good ones. The other one. So then, going to my favorite scene, which is the very next page, this is where Pony Boy and Johnny go running into the church to go save the kids. Um, so starting up there at the very top, they go running into it, says, is that guy coming? Is that guy coming? Johnny shook his head. That guy being Jerry, who tried to follow them. Window stopped him. Too scared? Nah. Johnny gave me a grin. <laughs> Too fat. <laughs> By the way, that not my favorite scene yet. But in my mind, you guys ever saw the old Winnie the Pooh cartoons? Yeah. Yeah. He would try to jump into Owl's house in the tree, and he'd get stuck, and his little feet would be like kicking out of the little. The, that's what I imagine with Jerry's, and like, like stuck in like the church window, and like Jerry's little feet are kicking, and they're trying. I have an imagination. So anyway, it's continuing on from there. I couldn't laugh because I was scared I'd drown in the smoke. The roar and crackling was getting louder, and Johnny shouted the next question. Where's the kids? In the back, I guess, I hollered, and we started stumbling through the church. I should be scared, I thought, with an odd, detached feeling, but I'm not. The cinders and embers began falling on us, stinging and smarting like ants. Suddenly, in the red glow and the blaze, I remembered, wondering what it was like in a burning ember, and I thought, now I know. It's a red hell. Why aren't I scared? We pushed open the door to the back room and found four or five little kids, about eight years old or younger, huddled in a corner. One was screaming his head off, and Johnny yelled, Shut up! We're going to get you out! The kid looked surprised and quit hollering. I blinked myself. Johnny wasn't behaving at all like his old self. He looked over his shoulder and saw that the door was blocked by flames, pushed open the window, and tossed out the nearest kid. I caught him. <laughs> now you're starting to see why it's my favorite scene. Um, I caught one quick look at his face. It was red marked from fallen embers and sweat streak, but he grinned at me. He wasn't scared either. That was the only time I can think of when I saw him without that defeated, suspicious look in his eyes. He looked like he was having the time of his life. I picked up a kid, and he promptly bit me, but I leaned out the window and dropped him as gently as I could, you know, being in a hurry like that. A crowd was there by that yeah, time. Babies. Dally was standing there. When he saw me, he screamed, for Pete's sake, get out of there. That roof's going to cave in any minute. Forget those blasted kids. <laughs> so now you see why that my was, favorite that scene. Was, that was Jerry. So when they come in, they're coming in there to save these kids who are well, one. How do you control the kids? Shut Yelling, up. shut up, I'm saving you. And so I would like to do that all the time in class. They're like, shut up, I'm teaching you. Like, oh, you be quiet. And then two, to save a child, what do they have to do? Do you know how many of you I would save if I could just throw you out a window? <laughs> just left and right. I would just save children all day long and just be like, I'm saving kids. Now given, I had kids get worried. He's like, Mr. Groviak, but if there's a fire in here, how would you save us? Right there. I have a window. I just have to throw you really hard. And so for some of you, I'm willing to commit to throw you through that window as many times as it takes to get you through. You will cripple. Right there. You will cripple us like right? this, What's important is that I get you through it. It might take 10 or 12 times, and you might not be moving a whole lot, but I will save you. So... 
that was my favorite scene. Oh, and then the scene where the kid bites him. Again, here's my imagination. The cartoons when a kid, like when the piranha bites the guy, he's like shaking his hand like the piranha goes. That's what I imagine. He's like the little kid biting his hand. He's like, ah, he's like shaking the kid around. And the kid's like flopping off. He's like, I'll save you. And he just throws the kid out the window. Happiness. Now here's where my favorite scene continues. Because then Pony Boy gets outside, but he's on fire. So Dally saves him. How does Dally save him? Punches him in the spine. Again, I would save all of you by throwing you out a window and punching you in a spine if that would save you. I mean, I don't know what order I would do it in, but I would ask. I don't need details. What's important is that I save you, Zachary, by punching you and throwing you out a window. And so that brought me a lot of happiness. Happiness. Owen. Uh huh. Yeah. I like the imagination connection. Zachary? Technically, I mean, I don't think it was like quite the same way, but we might have been Johnny for all we know. Oh, uh, speaking of Johnny, um, Pony Boy makes it out okay. Johnny does not. Because they talk about the fact that the, the roof collapses on top of Johnny, and they talk about one of the beams falling on him. This is what they're talking about falling onto Johnny's back. So this becomes one of those good news, bad news things. Uh, Johnny's body is completely burnt because he's caught in the fire, second or third degree burns over the whole thing, horribly painful. Luckily for him, we're going to find out in the next chapter, he's not going to feel any of it because he's paralyzed. Uh, because when the beam fell on him, it broke his spine. So it's one of those, ooh, your whole body's burned. You're going to be in pain. Oh, wait, you're paralyzed? You're not going to feel anything. And so that becomes like that general thing. So it turns out that not the horse thing in the world. Hang on. So I did not get a chance to read chapter seven with you, which brings me sadness. So after you guys finish tomorrow, chapter seven, eight, that'll be the quiz coming up. We're going to start chapter nine with you guys next week. I told you at some point you were going to have to read on your own. This is the part where at some point you're going to have to read on your own. Home children, we'll see you later. And we'll miss you. And remember, save children by throwing them out of windows. And punching them in the spine.